It's the show that magicians around the globe don't want you to see. The Masked Magician is back, out of hiding, daring to expose the world's most highly guarded secrets. You'll find out how they perform amazing appearances, death-defying escapes, baffling levitations, astounding vanishes, mind-blowing sleight of hand, and impossible illusions. No magician is too famous. No trick too big. No secret too sacred. The magician's code will be forever broken on magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. Tonight, the masked magician pulls back the curtain and exposes the secrets to making a beautiful woman vanish into thin air and reappear in the blink of an eye. Penetrating a solid sheet of steel. Taking a girl's head for a spin. Impaling a woman with a razor sharp sword. Plus a death defying escape from the pulverizing blades of a giant wood chipper, and much more, right now on Magic's Biggest Secrets, finally revealed. The magician will use this large open-sided cabinet for his first illusion. He walks around to show us that the cabinet is empty. Just to prove it, he climbs up the stairs and onto the platform. Okay, we get the point. He calls for one of his lovely assistants who happens to be wearing an incredibly fancy costume. A curtsy, how charming. She could coax the mask off the Lone Ranger with that outfit. Prom night at the OK Corral. It's elegant. But when it comes to the magician's girls, usually skin is in. I'm sure this outfit is part of this illusion, which originally thrilled live audiences in theaters back in the late 1800s. We can see that her fancy hoop skirt completely fills the cabinet. Fortunately for her, she doesn't completely fill the skirt. With the girl in the proper position, it's time to make some magic. The magician reaches up and grabs a cord that hangs from the top of the cabinet. The cord controls a shade that's lowered down in front of the young lady, but not all the way. As we can see, she's still there, and so is her scarlet red, scarlet O'Hara skirt. What could the magician be up to? It's clear he wants us to keep an eye on the girl, and so we will. He grabs the shade and lowers it, as his assistants lower the shades on the other sides. I'm sure the girl in the fancy dress is still inside. Let's have another look. That girl is gone goodbye, fooled me again. Wait, there's our southern bell on the other side of the stage. The parasol completes her dainty outfit. Nice touch. She's ready for a stroll along the mighty Mississippi. Nice going, masked man. Now, show us how you did it. OK, if the girl in the giant skirt completely fills the cabinet, how does the magician make her disappear and reappear on the other side of the stage with lightning speed? The secrets are as elaborate as her costume. First of all, this is no ordinary outfit. Concealed beneath the sash on the girl's waist 
are four eye hooks. Two in front, and two in back. These hooks are crucial to the secret. The shades are drawn to cover the top half of the girl. This is where the next secret comes into play. Attached to the ceiling of the cabinet are four cables. The girl releases the cables in order to attach them to the four eye hooks on her dress. Once the cables are released, she opens the sash to expose the hooks. Then she quickly snaps the cables over the hooks in front, then behind. She's careful to keep the lines taut while not moving too much. Watch, we can barely see her move. She now opens the back of the costume and prepares to slip out of it. This is one situation where a big skirt and a slender girl come in handy. She climbs down off of the back of the platform. Notice that during the trick she never seems to stop swaying her skirt. This is to hide her movement as she's getting out of the dress. From the front, her escape isn't visible. There's a secret here, too. A mirror, triggered by one of the other assistants, flips down into place and reflects the floor beneath the cabinet. From behind, we see the assistant release the mirror seconds before the girl escapes. Once she's out of the cabinet, only the suspended hoop skirt remains. But when the shades are raised, it's gone. Where does it go? The secret is in the false ceiling hidden in the cabinet. With the shades down, a stagehand in the wings activates an electronic switch, which sends the false ceiling down, crushing the skirt into the base of the platform. See? The ceiling has reduced that big skirt into a small pile of fabric. With the skirt apparently vanished, how does the girl reappear in the same outfit on the other side of the warehouse? Remember the stairs she climbed to reach the platform? They're part of this secret. From behind, we see the girl crawl from the platform into the hollow stairs, just before they're wheeled to the other side of the stage. Pretty sneaky, if you ask me. Once she's here, she climbs out of the stairs and into a duplicate hoop skirt that is waiting behind the prop steamer trunks. Looks like she's had plenty of practice getting dressed quickly in small places. The shades are raised to reveal the empty cabinet, and all the girl has to do is stand up to make her exquisite reappearance. She picks up the parasol as an added bit of dramatic flair and takes her place alongside the magician. The most sophisticated and overdressed assistant in the bunch. But you know her secret. The magician will now attempt a timeless classic, the floating zombie ball. He starts with his brightly polished chrome ball. With some magical gestures, he casts a spell over the ball and then casts the black scarf over it. Suddenly, the ball begins to rise. The magical spell is causing the ball to float beneath the scarf. And now, it comes up for air. The ball rests on the edge of the scarf then dips back down for another spin. He pulls it back, but it always seems to want to fly away. Better put it down before somebody loses an eye. Wait, now he's made it disappear. Or 
so we thought. It takes flight once more. Then he's able to convince it to take a rest. The zombie ball, one of the most popular tricks in all of magic. Okay, how did the magician make the shiny ball seem to float beneath that magic cloth? You know there's a secret, and this one is simpler than you might imagine. At the beginning of the trick, the ball is sitting on the pedestal and the magician covers it with a black scarf. Instantly, it begins to float, but not under its own power or some phony magic spell. The ball is actually supported by this black metal rod that's hidden behind the cloth. One end is attached to the back of the ball, the side you never see, and controlled by the magician who secretly holds the other end in his fingertips. When the cloth is in place, he manipulates the ball by manipulating the rod. Wherever he points the rod, the ball will follow. With the cloth hiding the rod, it looks like the ball is floating under its own power. He can even make the ball rise above the cloth, as long as he doesn't let the rod show. From this angle, we can see how he makes the ball momentarily disappear. He simply points the rod backward, alongside his arm, and hides the ball behind his back. Covered by the cloth, he can slide the ball back out to the front and let it magically reappear. Once more around the room, and now you know the secret to the world-famous zombie ball. Up next, the extraordinary secrets to penetrating a solid sheet of steel by magic. Twisting a woman's head 360 degrees. The amazing street magic trick of passing a cigarette through a solid coin. Plus, in the most terrifying escape ever attempted, the magician faces the razor-sharp blades of a wood chipper and lives to show you how it's done. When magic's biggest secrets finally reveal, return. Here's another classic trick from the world of close-up magic. This one involves a half dollar and an ordinary cigarette. Notice that the magician doesn't smoke it. He has a nasty habit of exposing tricks and maybe a few others, but smoking isn't one of them. With a cigarette, he magically traces a circle on the back of the coin until he gets the cigarette to stick in the center. Then he pierces the coin with the cigarette and pushes it through. I can assure you that this is not an optical illusion. The cigarette has penetrated the half dollar. He gives the cigarette a tug and slowly pulls it back out of the coin, which appears unharmed. Two solid objects, good as new. Okay, how did the magician make the cigarette penetrate a solid metal coin? The trick is in the coin. It's not solid at all. From the back, we can see that there is a spring-loaded hinge attached. When the magician presses the cigarette against the center of the coin, the hinge pushes back allowing the cigarette to pass through a hole that has been secretly drilled and disguised with a plug. The plug is attached to the hinge. From the front, we can only see the cigarette going into the coin. When the magician pulls the cigarette back out of the hole, the spring snaps back, filling the hole with the secret plug that makes the hole invisible. An ingenious trick, but now you know it's secret. For this next illusion, the magician will use this solid steel plate that is mounted inside a wooden frame. 
Sometimes magicians use a mirror for this same trick. He knocks on the steel to prove that there are no breaks or trap doors. I can assure you that this is one solid piece of steel. We can now see that there is a space for the magician behind the plate. In this illusion, he intends to dematerialize and pass through the solid steel. He calls for his assistants who bring a large sheet. You didn't think he was going to dematerialize out in the open and alone, did you? Not when he can be surrounded by beautiful women. He taps the steel plate one more time, then steps behind the frame. His assistants unfold the sheet, which the magician holds up to cover the frame. He raises and lowers the sheet to show that he's still standing behind the frame. He raises it again and, like magic, he's passed through solid steel. The mass magician, one very tricky guy. So how does the magician pass through the solid plate of steel? It's not by magic, I can tell you that. The steel plate is, in fact, solid. There are no trap doors or hidden panels. The secret is in the sheet. This is where the magician gets a helping hand. Notice that it looks like there are three hands holding the sheet. The one on the end is fake. It's attached to a rod inside the top of the curtain. Backstage, the assistants have carefully folded the sheet so that the fake hand is hidden from view. From the front, we'll show you exactly where it's hidden. When they unfold the sheet, it looks like the magician is holding it with two hands. From above, you can see that he's merely holding the rod with his right hand. When the curtain is raised, the magician ducks down to make it look like he's still hidden behind the frame, but he is simply slipping around from the back to the front. Since both hands have supposedly never left the top of the sheet, it looks as though he has passed right through the steel. He quickly rolls the rod backward to conceal the fake hand in the sheet and prevent it from being exposed. He drops it to the floor and accepts his applause. But you won't be so willing to applaud now that you know the secret. Next, the secrets to the most twisted illusion you've ever seen. And popular street magic like bending a spoon with the power of the mind. And using magic to make cigarette ash pass through a woman's hand. Plus, the masked magician escapes from the grinding jaws of a wood chipper before being ground to a pulp. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed returns. Here's an updated version of a baffling illusion that has been performed since the days of Houdini. Let's see what the magician intends to do with this large contraption. He walks around the box and sizes it up. I'm sure he's thinking one of his lovely assistants would fit nicely. Let's look inside. He opens the door and... Vertical stripes, how slimming. He calls in one of his assistants. She looks slender enough to fit inside, and the right height, too. 
He lowers the top of the box over her head and gives us one last look at her torso. He locks her legs into place then closes the front of the box. This is a brave girl. But he throws in some hypnotic hand waves just in case. Next, he swivels the head box, first to her right, then to the left. Now back and forth. She's playing along, but I guess she really has no choice. Incredible, a full revolution. She's still smiling. And another, and she doesn't look a bit dizzy. Let's see what effect this has had on her. Now that is twisted. Magician closes up the box. I hope he intends to put her back the way she was. In this condition, she's kind of hard to shop for. A couple of revolutions in the other direction. Is it me, or does she look relieved? I know I would be. He opens the box. And out she steps. No worse for the wear. And she wears it well. So how did the masked magician make the innocent girl so naughty? The secret is in the box. As you can see, it's much deeper than it appears from the front. The striped interior is your first clue that something is up. Magicians always use stripes and patterns to deceive the eye. The girl steps into the box, and you can see that she's standing all the way against the back wall. He closes the doors, and from inside the box, you can see how much room there is in front of her. More on that in a minute. First, we'll explain how he makes her head appear to revolve in a complete circle. Through the opening in the back of the head box, we see the back of her pretty blonde head. But secretly concealed above the opening is a false panel with a blonde wig. This is what we really see. When he turns the head box, all the girl has to do is turn to her right along with the box. When making the complete rotation, all she does is turn as far as she can to the right, then while the box hides her face, she turns to the left and waits for the box to come around. Here it is again. But what happened to that beautiful body? Those are her fingers, but that can't be her torso. Remember all that room she has in front of her? When the doors close, she quickly releases two hidden panels that have been obscured by the painted stripes. The panel on her right hides half of her body. What a shame. It's got a mirror to reflect the striped wall and a center strip with cutouts for her hand. On the left is a similar panel, but this one has a twisted up duplicate of her costume. She secretly flips all of these parts into place and has plenty of time to get ready for the reveal while the magician is pretending to rotate her head. She pokes her hands through the cutouts and wiggles her fingers behind the twisted costume. Here's the secret action with the front doors wide open. First one panel, then the other, all while the magician is demonstrating the head box. This girl is a multitasker. 
For the second part of the illusion, she reverses the process, quickly flipping the panels back into their hiding places. And there she is, not the least bit out of shape. Next, the Masked Magician shows you how to spear a beautiful girl in one easy lesson and exposes the secrets to famous street magic, like bending spoons with psychic powers. And the magician dares to cheat death when he attempts to escape before being ground to dust by the crushing blades of a wood chipper. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed, return. The magician will now demonstrate the power of mind over matter using this ordinary teaspoon. Watch carefully as he concentrates on the spoon, using his brain waves to make it bend before our very eyes. Amazing. And a bend that won't easily be straightened. This is one piece of silverware that's not going to fit back into the drawer thanks to the power of the mind. Okay, so how did the magician bend this ordinary spoon with his mind? The secret is that the spoon isn't so ordinary. It's rigged with a spring at the center, so it will always curl up into this bent position. When the spoon appears to be bending by itself, the magician is just slowly releasing his grip on the spring causing it to go from its open position back to its naturally bent position. The trick spoon does all the work. But how does it appear to be ordinary and ungimmicked when the magician shows how he can't straighten it? The secret here is that there are two spoons, the one with the spring that bends and this one that is already bent. He keeps this identical bent spoon hidden in his hand at the start of the trick. See? He casually holds it in his palm while we are busy watching the other spoon. Once the spring-loaded spoon bends itself, the magician simply switches it for the duplicate bent spoon when he pretends to struggle with it. He's really using some sleight of hand to switch the spoons, leaving the one with the spring hidden in his palm. All he has to do now is show the bent spoon and we believe he did it all with his mind. But we're smarter than that. We should warn you not to attempt the magician's next dangerous trick, which involves this very imposing looking sword. To prove that it's real, he plunges the sword into an apple, impaling it. He slices the apple in two and offers half to his assistant. She doesn't seem amused. He tosses his half away, then hers. You can bet someone else cleans up the secret warehouse. A little more conjuring to get his girl in the mood. And he thrusts the sword into her stomach, then straight through her body. No wonder he didn't let her eat the apple first. You can see the sword is completely through her torso. The magician removes it, gives the girl another magical wave, and all is forgiven. This guy has all the right moves. So how does the magician plunge the sword through the girl's body without killing her in cold blood? 
The first secret is in the sword. Actually, there are two of them. This one couldn't kill a fly. It's incredibly flexible. That's because it's made from two pieces of an ordinary tape measure that have been attached face to face. See, it bends at the slightest touch. So if it's that flexible, how did he impale the apple? That's where the second sword comes in. This one is solid. It's sharp and stiff, very stiff, as his assistant is eager to prove. While our attention was focused on the sliced apple, his assistant was secretly pulling a switch. Here we can see her trading the real sword for the fake, flexible one. But how does the tape measure sword pass through the body of the girl? You guessed it, it doesn't. The secret is concealed by her costume. This trendy corset and sash combo isn't just making a bold fashion statement. It's hiding a flat metal tube that conforms to the girl's waist. From behind, you can see the back of the tube. To impale the girl, the magician inserts the end of the fake sword into the mouth of the tube. He pushes it into the tube, and it appears to pass through the girl. In reality, it's traveling through the tube, around her waist, and out the backside. Close examination reveals that the sword looks much shorter now than it did before entering the tube. Here's what the metal tube looks like without the corset. See? It's been formed around the girl's waist to provide a channel for the sword. The sword goes in one side, bends through the channel, and eventually comes out the other side. You can see that the girl is never in any real danger. And that's how the magician impales the same girl over and over, without running out of assistance or running from the law. Next, the magician exposes the secrets to the famous street magic trick of making cigarette ash pass through a human hand. And then, he faces the deadly jaws of an industrial wood chipper in the most dangerous escape ever attempted. Find out how it's done when Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed returns. Here's a trick that popular street magicians use to freak the minds of unsuspecting victims. The magician asks his volunteer to show that her hands are empty and clean on both sides. In this case, he's using his assistant, but she's not in on the trick. He asks her to hold her hands with her fingers outstretched. The magician then picks up an ashtray, takes some cigarette ash, and sprinkles it on the back of one of the girl's hands. He tells her to make a fist and then commands her to rub the ashes with her other hand. They've disappeared. Now he asks her to open up her fist and look. There they are. The ashes have melted through her hand and reappeared in her palm. Freaky, huh? So how does the magician make the ashes melt through the girl's hand and reappear in her palm? The secret is so simple, you'll be amazed. Her hands are clean on both sides, and again, this is usually done with an unsuspecting volunteer. The magician shows the back of his hands, but not the front. That's because he secretly coated one of his fingers with ashes before the trick began. It's important to do this out of your volunteer's view. He's ready to begin. When he indicates for the girl to hold out her hand, he purposely holds his own hands low. She's guaranteed to mimic the move so he can naturally readjust them to where he wants. During this move, he transfers the ash from his finger to the palm of her hand. By doing it casually, she has no idea what he's just done. Now that her hands are at the right height, he simply sprinkles some ash on the back of one hand and tells her to concentrate as she rubs it in. 
Of course, she's actually just wiping it off. But by suggesting that she concentrate, he can easily convince her that it is melting into her hand. When she opens her palm, she has no idea how the ash really got there and assumes that he has somehow freaked her mind. An industrial wood chipper, capable of reducing whole trees to dust in a matter of seconds. Just imagine what it could do to a body. And here come the girls. No time to imagine what they can do. There's a dangerous escape coming up. Appropriately enough, the magician has a solid pine box in the shape of a coffin headed straight toward the wood chipper's 1,000 RPM blades. You can probably guess what he's got in mind. We know this guy is pretty twisted. Under no circumstances should you attempt anything you're about to see. Sure enough, he heads straight for the coffin. Let's hope he's not headed to an early grave. His assistants are all too eager to help seal him inside the pine box. Maybe he's not so easy to work for. The lid goes into place. The teeth continue to grind. The magician sticks his hands through two hand holes. The lid is fastened with screws as his hands are secured with a pair of regulation police handcuffs, which will make his escape from the coffin even more difficult. I don't even want to think about what's going to happen next. The grinding teeth of that wood chipper are less than 30 feet away. Do you think the magician plans to escape before he and the box are ground into garden mulch? The box is in motion, cruising down the conveyor and directly at the spinning blades. Less than 10 feet to go and he's still trapped inside. This is too dangerous. His hands are free, but someone better let him out. This is one continuous camera shot. The box isn't stopping. It's being sucked into the steel jaws. I can't bear to watch. The chipper is turning the coffin and its occupant into shreds. So long, mass man. And I didn't even get a chance to thank him for all the laughs. But wait, who's this? Can it be? The mass magician. He stared death in the face and won again. Nice work. Now, show us your secret. Next, the masked magician will reveal the incredible secret behind his death-defying escape from the pulverizing jaws of the wood chipper. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed returns. We just saw the masked magician survive the pulverizing blades of an industrial wood chipper and escape unharmed. Incredible. But now for the secrets. So how does the magician escape the coffin and the handcuffs before it's fed into the grinding blades of the 220 horsepower wood chipper? There's a secret, but this is still a very dangerous trick. Again, do not try this at home. Failure would result in a horrifying death. This is a real wood chipper and the pine coffin is actually being reduced to tiny flakes of wood. But the masked magician knows he'll make it out in time. The assistants use real screws to fasten the lid in place. The handcuffs, on the other hand, aren't so real. That's why he's confident he'll escape before he's chopped to pieces. The handcuffs are rigged to open with the slightest pressure. Here's another look. A quick snap of the wrists, and he's out. The truth shall set you free, and so will phony cuffs. Not very sporting of him, but then again, he's got to minimize the danger. The magician is free of the handcuffs, but still headed for certain doom. 
but he's not worried since the coffin has a secret trap door along one side. This secret panel allows him an instant escape. Once his hands are free, all he has to do is flip open the door and jump out of the box. A thick pad breaks his fall only seconds before the box is chewed to shreds. A soft landing, safe and sound. And here's the secret to why we never see his escape. Beneath the conveyor belt is a mirror that reflects the ground. We never see anyone walk in front of the mirror like this, so the illusion is very convincing. When you look closely from this angle, you can see the mirror vibrating as the coffin enters the chipper. Of course, you're so distracted by the destruction, we don't even bother to notice. And now for the magician's escape route. He crawls from the crash mat across the ground and along the back side of the chipper. While we're looking at the shooting shards of wood, he's making his way into the cab of the truck. The driver's door is open and ready for his arrival. From the front seat, it's just a short hop into the back of the truck. A black curtain hides the magician until it's time for him to make his appearance. He sneaks out and strikes a pose, offering relief to those who feared the worst. Next time, the Masked Magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets.